851, turn right, heading 180. What is a landing slot at an airport? While not the most frequently asked question in the industry, a landing slot is something that is pivotal to any airline's operations, and sometimes acquiring it can be more difficult than anything else. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation, and as you may have guessed, today I'll be discussing slots at airports. As we get the video rolling, I'll answer the very first question, that being, what is a landing slot? Very simply, an aircraft landing slot or takeoff slot is something which is granted by an owner of an airport, not an airline. The airport owner determines which airlines get which specific slot into their airport. In turn, this will allow the slot holder, say Emirates, to schedule landings and takeoffs from that same airport during a time period outlined. However, there's actually much more to slots than a trusty definition. In fact, slots are one of, if not the most prized possessions in the industry today. Without a slot, you simply cannot operate into an airport of your choosing, and therefore it renders your airline useless. To get to the bottom of slots, we need to head back to after the Second World War. This was when demand wasn't all that present for air travel. Thousands of miles of airstrips, taxiways and parking bays had been built across countries including England during the Second World War and were therefore left unattended years after the war concluded. Congestion around airports was simply not a thing back then and airlines could operate scheduled flights into airports with ease. This didn't last long though. As Airbus were introduced to the industry, competition ramped up, advancements in aviation were noticeable, and air travel continued to change at rapid rates. More and more people chose to fly, more airlines grew, and these airports, which were just after World War II empty, were now closing in on full capacity. It was in the 1970s when something was finally done, and the International Air Transport Association launched their worldwide slot guidelines. While slots are determined by the airport, there are various conferences each year in different parts of the world for the purchasing of slots, adjustment of slots, and in some casing, the selling on of slots. Airlines work with the airport to maximise profits by picking the best slot time for them. For example, specific times are likely to drive in more revenue than, let's say, another time. If Qantas wanted to start a new Melbourne to Sydney service, ignoring the curfew, that departed Melbourne at 1.45am, this would be, you'd say, less than ideal, and those passengers would, I'd say, be more inclined to opt for either another airline or another Qantas flight that operated in the morning or just day in general. This worldwide slot system, according to the International Air Transport Association, is nothing but fair and transparent. Are there any downsides to slots? Quite possibly, yes. Airports are becoming congested, and that means fewer slots are available for existing airlines or even new ones for that matter. If a new airline, or even an existing one, wishes to launch new services into a congested airport, they will find it very difficult. The prices can be in the millions, and because it is literally first in best dressed, the time available may not suit an airline's operations. This can result in them choosing, for example, London Gatwick to base their operations over Heathrow, which may actually be a problem for passengers if Heathrow is a connecting airport for the airline's passengers. So you've heard me say that slots were expensive, but I'm sure you want to know how expensive they really are. A slot into Europe's most congested airport, London Heathrow, was recently sold by the Air France and KLM Group to Oman Air. This slot cost 75 million US and is a one daily service. This is out of reach for many, many airlines, and when you look at it, 75 million is not far off the price of a decent plane to actually operate with. From this cost alone, it indicates how important correct planning of operations can be, because now you can see just how much it does truly cost to operate into an airport like London Heathrow. So, what if Oman Air wanted to jump to two times daily, or maybe add another flight on a three times weekly service into Heathrow? That is, tens of millions more added on to their existing costs to do so. Slots are pricey, but they help organise congestion around airports. In addition, slots, while being good for organising flights, cannot always be a great way of getting aircraft into an airport. For example, 
if Emirates had a slot for 4.30pm to 4.40pm, but the flight was delayed three hours at its origin location, that essentially throws out the original slot designated. This is why we also see holding patterns. While slots are in place, if you have 50 flights arriving within, let's say, three minutes of each other, air traffic controllers need to place aircraft in what is called a holding pattern or stacks, where they will fly in an oval pattern while descending. Eventually, they will be given permission to land, but only when it's safe to do so and a slot is available for them. If they don't want to be put in a holding pattern, airlines might opt for a different flight path, which may actually take longer, but ensure they are not put into any holding pattern. However, in a congested airport like Heathrow, that is now quite literally impossible to do. Regardless of the time you come in, you are going to face holding patterns, stacks, and delays. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video on airport slots. I do hope it was helpful in some way, shape, or form, and you learned a little bit more about landing and takeoff slots. If you have any further questions or have any thoughts on slots, please feel free to comment them in the comments below. I'd like to thank you very much. I look forward to you all joining me in the next one.